Okay, look at the concepts again, what we did yesterday. Sketch. Okay, if it said graph, I need to get basically every detail of the whole thing accurate. It didn't say graph, it said sketch. There are some people out there though who almost use the words interchangeably. So sketch is definite, like you know you go in, you just go like that and you sketch something up. Whereas graph is, do the whole thing properly. So what can I do now? I was fussy about it to make it even clearer. Instead of saying graph the following, I said sketch the following showing what? The intercepts. So we want the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and we want the correct shape. It didn't say it wants the max and the mean and the point of inflection and anything else is there. It's just, do you understand the basics about the shape? So here we go. So you don't understand this topic and you're sitting there going, I don't understand it all. We can just let x equal naught. Now we can let... That's our two possibilities. There are only two possibilities. What do they have to do with? They are the intercepts. They will give us the intercepts. So by the way, we can talk about the x-axis and y-axis, but I don't want to. I just want to say, just let x equal naught, let y equal naught. So if we let x equal naught, we'll have naught plus two multiplied by naught minus two, and you could have done a lot of this in your head. We got naught minus four, and I'll leave a bit of room. What have we got? We've got 2 times by minus 2. And everything inside me wants to tell you all the shortcuts of what's going on. So I'm going to keep that as 2 fours, uh, two there's a 4 and 8, 16. And the two negatives become a positive. So we now know we have one point, And that one point has an x value of 0 and a y value of 16. So I can go to my graph now. And I can go, I want 0, 16. But that's my x and that's my y. Let's squash it down a bit so I've got room to write. And I'm going to call that point 16. Writing it as coordinates, bracket, naught, from a number, bracket. You've got to do the whole thing. If it says, what's the way in the set, you can write whatever you want. Well, you can't write 17. You can, but you'll get it wrong. So we're just talking about it 16. Now, be thinking about it. Let's just let x equal naught will give us which one? The y in the set. So how do we do the other bit now? So we've done let x equal naught. So let's go to y equal naught. That one's finished. All that gave us was one point. We want more points. So let's let y equal naught. So now we've got naught equals x plus 2 times by x minus 2. Why am I putting the times in? Just to nag you guys that we've got a multiplication in between there. So that has three possible answers. One of them is a minus 2. Because minus 2 plus 2 will give us. Say it for me. Oh, zero. Zero. This one will be a 2. Because a 2 minus 2 will give us? Zero. And this one will be a 4 because it will give us a zero. And you can just learn rules like it's the opposite of the 2, it's the opposite of the minus 2, it's the opposite of the minus 4. And you can go equations for them. So I've got a dot at minus 2. And you've got to be reasonable on that and show where it is. Do you have to write minus 1? No. You have to write sufficient numbers. So this will have a minus 2 will turn that into 0. A 2 will also turn that into 0. So I go across here, remember I'm writing sort of backhand and look at you while I'm writing that way. Write better that way sometimes. A 4 will also turn that into 0. So there's three possibilities for getting 0. So I've now got four dots for one of these graphs. Now it's either going to be one of those graphs or it's going to be one of those graphs, and you've got to figure out which one it is. The other big thing that sticks out like anything, everything about the x's is positive. That means if I actually bothered to expand all these brackets out, it would be an x times an x times an x. So we'd have positive x cubed with a whole lot more stuff written there. Where do you expect a positive to start? That's negative and that's negative, so it's not going to be down that way. It can't be down that way because we're talking about the positives. This graph is all about the positives. So it's going to start up here where I talk about pos pos or plus plus. So we've got positive that way and we've got positive that way. So it's going to start up there somewhere. I'm going to start here. It comes down, goes down to there, comes up again, goes up here. Now, by the way, like I keep nagging about, would that be the max? I happen to be close to it. There might be questions where it is the max, 
on this one it won't be. Maybe it'll go just past it and come back down. So look what they asked you for. I just said, get me those four dots and put the shape in and make sure you don't have it upside down. So how do we know the right way up? Positive start up here where everything's positive. So from your point of view, everything's positive there. So if I had a parabola and I had x squared minus 5x plus 6, because that's positive, the parabola starts up there. So which way is the parabola going? That way. So <coughs> if it's a cubic, it's still the same. It stays that way, but this, this part will go down. Of course, you can do the hunch. Hunch uh, hunches up like that. Does all that sort of stuff. Okay, enough said. Now we repeat the process. But there's something really different about this question. That's the fact that it says squared. Now, some people yesterday got the point that it has a special effect. We won't talk about the special effect. So what are we going to do? We're going to let x equal naught just like we did before. Let's have a look at that one. I've run out of room a bit. I'll go over here. I've got naught minus 3 all squared. That's a multiplied naught minus 1. So what does it mean by let x equal naught? I mean to replace every x by a 0. So what have I got? Minus 3 times itself is 9. Now for years I've written minus 3 squared times by minus 1. And because of how many people stuck that up over the last 40 years, I've stopped saying writing that and I'm saying this to you. Minus 3 times itself. Everyone says 9 because two negatives make it positive. Why is it that student after student in year 12 and in year 11 write minus 9? It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So, what it, so I've just decided more recently, maybe in my, more my test cases, just to say minus 3 squared is 9. And that's a minus 1. So what have I got? Minus 9. So look what we did. We put in a 0 for an x, and we got a minus 9 for a y. So now I could start drawing the graph up again. What have I got? I just go there. That'll do. Minus 9. If you look at my thing here, across this one, I did all the scale on this one, but I didn't bother with that one. Because it didn't say graph, what did it say? Sketch. Yeah. By the way, if I didn't even put those in, but I made it look reasonable, you've still done the sketch. So the sketch is about, do you understand some of it? Not necessarily everything. So here we go. Now what we're going to do after we've done that x equal naught, that y equal naught. So, so we, instead of y, we put 0, x minus 3 squared, x minus 1. And I feel like I have to write this down. So it means write x minus 3 how many times? Write it twice. Write that down twice. And now I can simply say the opposites, or I can say what number, when you subtract 3 from it, will give us 0. And the answer is 3, which happens to be the opposite of the minus 3. So if I put a 3 there, a 3 there, and a 3 there, what will I get? Everyone says? 0. So 1, 2, 3. So one of the dots on this graph has to go through 3, or touch 3. That also says 3. So I could say I've got two threes. And people refer to it, haven't heard it for a long time, but we used to have to talk about it. It was a double root. It was a double x in the set. What's this one? One, so for the top there. My family with um, WhatsApp. So we've got a graph that's either going to be like that or upside down. How can I tell it's not like that? that it is like that. Everything was positive. That was positive x, that was positive x, that's positive. There's no reason for it to go upside down, so it has to be one of those graphs. And I do the hunch up because of it's going to be one of those. How can I get one of those going through there? That has to start up here. So it's up here at positive, positive. So it comes down to there, comes down screaming down to there. Does it go through and come back up and go down? Now, a lot of you know it doesn't go through. What if you're unsure? What could you do? But you will be sure, hopefully, after this. But what if you weren't sure? Well, we're putting in a 4 and see what happens. So what, how do we say putting in a 4? Let x equals 4. Now I'll have 4 minus 3 squared 
multiplied by 4 minus 1, and what have I got? 1 times 1 is 1, times by that is 3. So now I can go up here. If that was 9, I can go up here and just go, oh, I've got one about there. Was well, that helpful? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be better if I said year 2. I purposely said 4, because I want you to see 4 wasn't that useful. That is 2 useful. Yeah, I'm running out of space. I've got enough space here. So we've got x minus 3 squared and then x minus 1, and I'm going to let x equal 2. That was you. Means I replace the x by 2. Who doesn't need all of this explained all this well? Who's already got the things they're knowing, but most of you are looking. So this one will be minus 1 times itself, which is positive 1, and then you've got 2 minus 1 is 1, and we've got 1. So we've got an x of 2, and I've got a y of 1. So ready? A 2 and a 1. Can you see the graph now? Um, Takes a while, doesn't it? So it comes screaming down here, goes through there, touches there, goes back up. Of course you can pick up and you can do more detail. And then it goes screaming down that way. I like, I like talking about it, it goes screaming up. I don't know why I just thought of it. And it goes screaming down. Why? Because if you put in a number like 10, this thing goes berserk up. If you put in a number like minus 10, it goes berserk down. So I want to say one last thing. So as x gets big, we said yesterday, as x gets big, what's going to happen to the graph? It's also going to get a very, very big. I should say very big. So if I put in an x equal 10, what are we going to get? Let's do it slow. We're going to have a 10 minus 3 squared multiplied by a 10 minus 1. So I've got 7, 7 to 49 times 9. And I go, what's that? I don't know. About 400 and something. 400 and about, about say 450. Who cares what it is? Might be 440, might be 460. So how do I graph a 440 if that's 9? And by the time I get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where's the graph? Through the ceiling somewhere. So as x gets big, and you only need a 10, imagine if we put in 100. <coughs> it's up in the atmosphere somewhere. Okay, so so as x gets, that's all that means. As x goes to infinity, as x gets big, what happens to y? It gets, and I like to say, bigger or biggest. So as, as x as x approaches negative infinity, so as x gets negative big, what happens to the y values? It gets bigger up. So it doesn't go bigger up, it goes bigger up. Yeah. Is your brain affected by bigger up? So it's a minus very big. How do we say very big in maths? So now let's look at the rule. A squared means touches the x-axis. You now got a rule. So if we have a squared, it doesn't go through, it touches. So if you knew what you're doing, you can set it comes screaming down, touches the three, goes back up and goes down there. We didn't have to get this point here. That comes later. Enough said? Uh, graphing a cubic. What do you do? I should do this. Do it again. <coughs> Graphing. So you're worse in the class at this topic. You ready, set? Ready? How do you draw a graph? Wherever possible, it actually can hold that light on. Doesn't mean you understand it. As much you do now. Some of you still won't. Some of you won't go quick until the while later. But that x equal not that y equal not. If in doubt, what do we do if we're in doubt? Starts with s and got lots of letters. Substitution. Substitution. <laughs> so I was in doubt. I was in doubt there. I knew it was there, and I knew it was there, and I knew it was there. What did I default back to? 
So when I was at school, I looked at this, and when I got to uni, I knew I could get this totally right. As long as I had enough time, they could not trick me, and they could not get me wrong. Because all I had to do was put in enough numbers and get enough answers. Substitution. So x equal to y equal to n. Substitution. A bit hard, though, when you're out school and all sorts of weird things. All right, enough said.